Well, praise the Lord. It's so good to be with you here today on what the world needs is Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. We all need the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. I want to say that I appreciate you for tuning in with us here today on what the world needs is Jesus. And we appreciate you so much. And don't, don't touch that dial now. We got something, we got something real. Well, you, you don't touch the dial no more, do you? You push that button. Don't push that button. Don't you do it. Don't push that button. Uh, we, we got something for you today. I guarantee you, you're going to love it. But we got so much preaching going to go on today and so much singing and stuff going to go on today that you'll have to like one part of it anyway. Amen. There'll be something you'll like on it. Amen. Praise God. We got Brother uh, Ricky uh, going to preach with us. We got Brother Larry. He's going to preach with us. And then we got some singing going on. We got point of honor, I think, and tradition. Boy, I tell you what, we're just going to have church today. Amen. Just let the Holy Ghost have his way. If you're watching this, I want you to just get in there and just get it right, just get right in there with us because we're here to have church. Amen. We're here to tell you about Jesus. Jesus and about his goodness. And don't the Bible call it the good news? Yes. Woo, glory. We're here to tell you the good news. If you'd like to watch us on the web, you can go to W, go to YouTube and go to W-O-L-W, YouTube, W-O-L-W, look up what the world, go to the video list and look up what the world needs is Jesus. And you can see us right there, amen, on, on Facebook. You can also go to Facebook. And let's look up what the world needs is Jesus on Facebook. And you can see us there. Also, you can get you can, uh, click on our videos there, too, and you can get our videos uh, there, too. You can see any of them you want to see. They're all on there. All the way from when we started back, I don't know, Humpteen years ago. Uh, yeah, here we go. I don't know what Humpteen is, but it was, a, it was Humpteen years ago. All right, here we go uh, on Facebook and then uh, on uh Farmers were on channel 7 and on Charter were on channel 183. We're on on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 4 p.m. I think that's going to stay the same. I think they're redoing the schedule and everything right now, but I think it's for the uh, over the week. I think that uh, maybe maybe later on, I think Wednesdays may be a whole gospel day and everything. So so y'all just y'all just tune in with us. Amen. Tune if if you're watching this by TV, if you're watching this by uh, video or if you're watching this by uh, on the YouTube, the, just tune in with us if you're watching this on uh, um, Facebook. Amen. Yeah. Just tune in with us and and, and we and, and we're going we're going to do the best we can do to tell you about a man that loves you and cares about you and wants to do something. Amen. Wants to do something about your situation. Amen. Praise God. Pentecostal Power Ministries in Larry, Georgia. We want to, uh, br uh, Brother Steve and Sister Debbie Collins, with the pastors there, would love to invite you to come out and be with them. On uh, it, It's on Larry Down Road, in, in, uh, and I'm not cussing either. That's really what that is, Larry Down Road. Amen. <laughs> Amen. See, see there? Uh, and, and if you get into uh, Larry... If you're on the main road there, Larry, that comes from Somerville, there, I mean, you can't miss it. Larry Dam Road, just right there in front of that, uh, right there, right there by that dollar store there, and just turn right there, and, and you'll see the church. Yes, amen. You can't miss it. And you see all the cars there at the church. Yes, amen. amen. Praise God. Just come on in and worship with us, and, and just let God have his way. The uh, Pentecost Fire Ministry also has a TV that they do a TV station over in uh, Somerville, Georgia. That's every last Tuesday night of the the month at six o'clock. Remember this. Don't forget our Holy Ghost meeting. Amen. Over in Gurley, Alabama. Amen. Every last, every last Tuesday night of the month at six thirty. Yes. That's the last Tuesday night of the month at 6:30. Holy Ghost meeting in Gurley, Alabama at Sadie's Auction Barn. Yes. 1169 Highway 72 East, Gurley, Alabama, 35748. I'm looking to see you there. Amen. Praise God. Just come on and just, you know what? We do the same thing there we do here. We just let the Holy Ghost have his way. Amen. That's the only thing I know to do. I want you to uh, remember that uh, on uh, Oasis Christian Center in Huntsville, Alabama, Brother Larry, Brother Don Craft, and Brother Larry Moss, pastors there, 
Y'all, y'all go if you anywhere in that area. I mean, Scottsboro or where you know, Scottsboro's not that far from Huntsville, and it's right there in Hunt. You know, right there in this end of Huntsville. It's uh, it's on North Parkway, Oasis Christian Center on North Parkway. Go be with uh, Brother Don, Brother Larry, if you're anywhere in that area. I guarantee you, they'll be just like we are. They'll treat you so many different ways. You gotta like one of them, amen. 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 Praise God. We're gonna we're gonna try our best, amen. We're gonna try our best to treat you like Jesus would treat you. Amen. Tell you about a man. Oh, yeah. Glory. Yes. Tell you about a man that can do it. Hallelujah. Woo. I'm about right. I better, I better get out. I better get set down. I'm fit to go to preaching. Amen. Glory to God. Brother Larry, Brother Ricky, either one won't get to preach then. Amen. Praise the Lord. You worship with point of honor now as they sing. Hallelujah. Today we're in a struggle like we've never been before. The principles we lived by. Hey man, what a joy it is to be with you here today on What the World Needs is Jesus broadcast. I'm just excited today to be a Christian. I'm excited that, that my name is written in the book of life, amen, right up there in heaven. Amen, my name's rolled in the book, amen, and God can open that book and he'll see my name right there, amen. You know what that means? That means I'm whenever I die, I'm going to heaven, amen. If Jesus comes back before I die, I'm still going to heaven, amen. Glory to God, if you're not saved today, that's how you get there, amen. If you don't know Jesus today, that's how we get to heaven. If you don't know Jesus today, that's how you get your name wrote in the book of life, amen. You got to know Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me, amen. That tells me that you got to know Jesus and you got to talk to God through Jesus. You know what? We can't even pray without talking through Jesus. Jesus is our mediator. Jesus is the one that, Jesus is the one that we go through to get to God, amen, because God is the higher power, amen. You know what? God's thoughts are higher than the earth is from the heaven, amen. That's how much God's thoughts are higher than ours. We, 
than, than ours. We think we know everything and we've got figured out and we, we know this and we know that and we know what's going on and we know how to do this and how to do that. But you know what? We don't have a clue when it comes to God. Amen. We have no idea because his thoughts are so much higher than our thoughts. Amen. We don't have no idea what, what, what we think is right or wrong or left or right. It don't matter. Amen. God does though. God knows everything that's going on today. He created this world. He created this place. He created everything you see. You can look out your window and God created that, amen? amen? Whatever it is, God created it because he is God. And He created. it tells us right there in the first book of Genesis, God created the heavens and earth, amen? That's it, that's all, we, that, that's it. That's all it's got to say. God created the heavens and the earth, amen? And that's what he did. And that's why we're here today, amen? amen. That's why we're here today. And, and we're here today to tell you about a man named oh, Jesus yes, that can help you get to heaven today because no, none of us want anybody to die and go to hell. Amen. You know what? There's, there's two places that you're going to go when you die. There's only two places. You know what? There, there's, there's the, the, the difference is good and evil, amen? The difference of this whole world today yes. is good oh, and evil, amen? The difference in where we go when we die is heaven and hell. Amen. And you got to you got to know Jesus before you get to heaven. That's right. You know what? You just think about that. If you don't know Jesus, you're going to hell. Cuz he said he said you have to know me. You have to know him. And you can't you can't you can't straddle that fence. You can't get on that fence and say, "Well, well, I know Jesus. Boy, I've heard it so much. I know Je you ask somebody that they know Jesus." Yeah. Yeah, I know Jesus. I know exactly who you're talking about. I, I think I'm saved. And then whenever they leave you, they go right back out there and do whatever they want. Amen. Yeah. I, I don't believe that person's saved in my point of view. Amen. I don't believe that person's saved because when you get saved, you'll turn around. You'll turn away from that. When you repent, that means turn away yeah. from that stuff. When you repent, that means get away from that. Yeah. Turn around and go the other way. You don't want to go that way, amen. Glory to God, repent of your sins. Peter told them over there, he said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. Glory to God, that's what we got to do today. We got to make sure, amen. amen, that we repent and get ourselves on our way to heaven today, glory to God, because that's where we're at. That's where we're going, amen. We're either going to heaven or hell, and we got to make up our mind. God's not going to make you go one or the other. But you have to go one or the other because when you die, you're going to. Amen. You're going, God's not going to make you be saved and go to heaven. He will not make you. Amen. It's your decision. It's your choice. It's where you want to go. Amen. It's your decision. You got mama can't make it for you. Your pastor can't make it for you. Your daddy can't make it for you. It's your decision. Amen. It's not nobody else's. Amen. We can preach to you and preach to you and preach to you, but it's not going to make you saved. The only way you can get saved is know Jesus Christ today, is to know the Heavenly Father. Get a hold of Him today, and you'll be saved. Amen. You get Jesus right in your heart today, and you'll be saved from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Brother David, we'll be saved and on our way to heaven today, glory to God. I love the Lord today. I'm excited to be a Christian, amen. You know what? You get saved and you, your excitement level will turn around, amen. You get saved and your excitement level will go from down here to way up here. Because I love the life I live with Jesus. And I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm not saying everything is perfect with my life. I have turmoil and problems and trials just like everybody else does, amen. But you know what? When all that stuff comes up and I start getting down and out and depressed and all that other stuff, uh -oh. yeah. then came Jesus, yeah. glory to God. Then came Jesus, amen, yeah. and he stepped right down yeah. and he helped me, glory to God. He reached down with his hand yeah. and I reached up with my hand and I got a hold of Jesus, yeah. amen. Yeah. You know what? That's the difference in being lost and saved today. Yeah. We've got Jesus to, to, to go through that with us, amen. Them children, them, them children, the, the three Hebrew children, had they not had Jesus, that would have turned out a whole different way. Amen. They was thrown in that fire, and had they not had Jesus, that wouldn't have come out like that. Amen. But they was thrown in a fire, and they walked out of that fire with not a, not a thread on their clothes burnt. They wasn't a hair on their head singed. Amen. They didn't even smell like smoke. 
because Jesus was in that fire with him. Amen. He'll go through the fire with you today. Whatever's going on in your life, he'll walk right in that fire with you. Amen. That's what he said. He said, I'll go through it with you. You call on me and I'll go through it with you. That's the Jesus. That's the God I serve today. Amen. You call on me and I'll go with you. Amen. That's all you got to do is call on him today. Just call on him and grab that hand when he reaches down for you. When he reaches down like that, you grab his hand. Amen. And he'll pull you right up out of that old miry clay. Amen. He'll, he'll pick you right up and set you on the road in the straight and narrow. Amen. Glory to God. You know what? Sometimes we veer off to the right or we veer off to the left. We'll get plumb off over there in the ditch. Amen. We'll get plumb off over there messed up. Glory to God. But you know what? You just ask Jesus to help you. You tell God you've messed up. You need to get straightened out. Amen. It don't matter what you've done. People tell me, well, I can't go to church because I've done this or I've done that. It, it, it's too much. I, I've done too much. But you know what? You've never done too much that Jesus can't save you from. You've never done too much to get forgiveness from. Amen. God will forgive you. Amen. He loves you and he don't want you to go to hell. He wants you to go to heaven. Amen. Right there where he's at. Glory to God. I love the Lord today and I hope if you're lost that you'll get saved before we even get started here and just go on and enjoy the program, amen? Go on and get saved. Go on and ask Jesus in your heart today and get saved and you'll enjoy this program a whole lot more. Yeah, man. Come on. Amen, you'll be good got your Bible out and ready to go, amen? Glory to God, I love the Lord today. Yep. Isaiah chapter 64. Oh, come on now. Isaiah chapter 64. Glory to God. I'm just, I'm just excited today to be a Christian. Glory to God. Isaiah 64 and verse 6 says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and, our, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. He said our, our rags are as, our, our, our righteousness is as filthy rags. And then he says we all do fade as a leaf. Do you know how a leaf fades? It just floats away. It just, it just gradually fades off. We, we, you know what? That's what happens to us when we get saved, amen? We get saved and we get like that leaf, amen? We get saved and we're going to church and everything's going good. And we miss a Sunday, amen. We miss Sunday morning going to church. Well, I, I'll catch it next week. But you know what? You're like that leaf yeah. fading away. Right. The next week comes, well, I missed Wednesday night or, or uh, Thursday night. You, that leaf takes another fade. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and before you know it, that leaf has done faded plumb away. And you don't even know where it's at, amen. That's how we get ourselves out of church. That's how we get ourselves in trouble today, amen. Amen. He said, and we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities Come on. like the wind have taken us away. Yep. Our sins will take us away. Yes, Amen. Our, our sins, were, our fleshly body, if we don't fight that flesh, if we, don't try to, if we don't try to put that flesh back, if we don't fight it, it'll take us right away. It'll be like that leaf. We'll just float right on off. We'll float on out of here. Amen. We'll be plumb out of church. Hey man, our sins will our sins will get us in trouble. Hey Amen. That's why we have to fight these old fleshly bodies day by day. Hey Amen. We have to fight that. We have to fight that. Hey Amen. But now, verse eight. But now, O oh Lord, Thou art our Father. We are the clay, and Thou art the Potter. Hey Amen. We are the clay, and they, Thou art the Potter. And we all are the work of Thy hand. Be not wroth, very sore, O Lord, neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee, we are all thy people. Amen. We are all thy people. You know what he said? He said, he said but now, O Lord, thou art our Father. We are all the clay. We are the clay, and thou art the potter. Amen. We are the clay. And he's the potter, amen. He sets us up on a wheel. A potter has a wheel. Yes, and he gets that clay. And he sets it up there. And he starts 
with a foot, he does a pedal and it turns it. Well, nowadays it's electric. You just mash the button and it spins it for you. Amen. But anyways, he starts that wheel going and he puts us up there on that wheel. And we start spinning and he starts molding us and shaping us. Yeah. You know what? Whenever we go through a storm, when we go through a problem, when we go through a trial, he's molding us. He's shaping us. He set us up there. And that storm, hey man, we think that's the worst thing in the world. Why is this happening to me? But when you come out on the other side, when you come out on the other side, God has shaped you just a little bit more. He's molded you just a little bit more where, where you need to be. Amen. He's took you where you need to be. You know what God told Jeremiah? He said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Amen. Yeah. Did you know before God forms it, before we're ever even in our mother's womb, God already knows who we are. Amen. God's got our hair numbered. Which I ain't got many, but he's got what I got numbered. Amen. He numbered, he got, he, he knows the number of hairs we have on our head, amen. That's how close God is, that's how close God knows his children, amen. That's how close God is. You know what, e even as parents today, we're not that close to our kids, amen. But God is to his kids. God is that close to his kids. And I thank God that I'm one of his, amen. I thank God that one day, I was lost and in that world, lost and undone without him. Yeah. Hey Amen. I was lost and old wretched, my, my righteousness was as filthy rags. Hey Amen. I was just lost and gone. Hey Amen. But then one day, then came Jesus. Then came Jesus right along and he gathered me right up. Hey Amen. And I asked him into my heart. Hey Amen. And he turned my life around. He saved my life. He helped me. He helped me get my life turned around. You know what? You can't do that by yourself. You can't go get saved and, 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 and turn everything around by yourself. Today, we need Jesus. There's so many things in the world today that we need Jesus to help us, amen? There's so much stuff that can just, that can just get your mind off of what's going on and get your mind. Everybody says, well, why do y'all go to church so much? You know what? We go to church so much because we keep our mind on yeah. Jesus, amen? Because if you don't keep your mind on Jesus, your mind's on something else, and the only thing else out there is the world, amen? So we got to keep our minds on Jesus where we can stay within, where we can keep our, our, ourselves cleaned up, amen? But you know what? You can't, you can't clean yourself up by yourself. You gotta have Jesus, amen. People always, always want. They, they I, I ask them, you, you know, you want to come to church? You, you know, well, I can't go to church. Can't go up there and get saved and stuff because I'm not cleaned up. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, straightened up enough to go do that. You know what? I don't care if you're drinking. Whenever I'm talking to you, you can be drinking. I don't care. Sure. You come on to church, bless God, because whenever you get to church. God's going to change. God's going to help you because you can't do it by yourself. It's so true that you cannot do that by yourself. But with God's help, when you get a hold of Jesus, he'll turn that around. He'll turn that want to. You know what? You'll go down, you'll go down and get saved and you'll come up a brand new man because your want to won't want to be to go to the bars and go drink and go do this and go party and live out in the world. Your want to will change. Hey Amen. And you'll turn around and you'll be one, you'll be one of them and say, Why are you going to church so much? Well, I got saved. Amen. Hey Amen. I got saved. Hey Amen. Yeah, Lord, got born again. Glory to God. Yeah. Hey Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. He said. He said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And he didn't stop there, see. He says, and before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet yeah. unto, unto all nations. Amen. He, he done all this before he was ever born. He done all this before he ever was in his mother's womb. Amen. Isn't that something? Isn't that something God knows us before we're ever in the womb? And whenever you get in the womb, he can do whatever he wants with you. Amen. Man. He can sanctify you if he wants to. That's right. He can make you a prophet of all the nations if he wants to. That's right. Amen. Right. Lord God, that's the God we serve today. Amen. Man, I tell you what. Lord. We are the clay and thou art the potter. Amen. We, we all are the work of thy hand. Mm -hmm. You know what? When Peter was in that boat... When Peter come up and that old storm come up, 
I believe God was, I believe, I believe Jesus was about to mold him up. I believe Jesus was about, I believe Jesus had him set on that wheel. Yeah. Amen. And that wheel was spinning. And he, and he sees, Peter sees Jesus out there in the water. And he said, Jesus, bid me to come out there. And Jesus said, jump on out that boat and come on. Get on out of that boat and come on out here, Peter. I believe Peter was, I believe his, I believe he was molded up. I believe his vase was full up here and he looked good and he jumped out in that water. And you know what happened to him? His vase started to crumble in. Hey Amen. He's seen the storm. That's what we do today when we see the problem coming, when we see the situation turning on us, whenever we don't think there's no answer out there, our vase starts to crumble. Amen. Our vase starts to fall in. God's trying to, trying to mold us up, but we see that storm coming. And just like Peter, we start to sink. Amen. And as we sink, our vase just gets weaker and weaker. Until we just fold up. You know what though? Jesus reached down his hand and he pulled Peter up out of there. You know what he done? He set him right back up on that wheel. He set him right back up on that wheel, started spinning that wheel and molding him up again. Amen. He getting his face cleaned up, getting him straightened up. Glory to God. Getting him cleaned up and straightened up. Amen. For whenever the next time comes. Amen. That's what he does to us. We get we get out we get all we get our face looking good, amen, and we're strolling right along. Something happens, we start to fold in. Amen. Our 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 base starts to fold up. Our clay starts to fall in. Yeah, come on. Amen. Then, and then we go through that situation, amen, and we just fold up. We just fold up, we lose we lose track of Jesus because we're we're all into the problem. Yep. We lose track, we lose sight of Jesus yep. because we're so concerned about this problem that's yep. come up. We're so concerned about what's going on in our life that we lose sight of Jesus. Amen. We lose this, we lose sight of Jesus and our clay starts to just wad up. Yep. But you know what? You know what? Jesus just sets us right back on that wheel. He just sets us back up on there, pours a little water, a little anointing oil on us. Amen. He starts, he starts whizzing us right back up. Amen. That wheel starts turning and he starts shaping us, making that, oh, you know what? He starts making that vase come right back up. He makes a big, beautiful vase back out of us. We're rolling along. You know what? You know what? Problem comes up again. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. We're in trouble. Amen. Yeah. Problem comes up again and our vase starts to crumble. But you know what? Every time our vase crumbles, every time we go down, we come up just a little bit stronger. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Every, every situation you go through, every problem you have, every trial you have, yeah. you go down, but you come back up just a little wow. bit stronger. Amen. You go down, but you come back. You know what Elijah done? Elijah went, Elijah went against 400 prophets, amen, 400 prophets of Baal. He went against them by himself, just him and God on his own, amen. He went against 400 prophets of Baal, amen. They, 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 he, he decided to challenge them to, to see which one of them's God was, was bigger yeah. than the other one, amen. So they got him up the bullets and some, they got him up some, they, they built him up a big old thing. Uh, 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 altar there to, to burn the bullets on. Yeah. Hey Amen. They, they dug water around the around it, filled it up with water. Hey Amen. Got it all full of water. Yes, sir. And Elijah said, "Okay, y'all go first. Y'all go on and go first. You call on your God." Hey Amen. Boy, they started calling on old Baal. They wanted Baal to come down. They wanted Baal to send fire down from heaven. Yes. Hey Amen. But you know what? They called and called and yes. called and oh. called. You know what? Baal never showed up. He didn't show up. Oh, old Elijah's over there making fun of him. Elijah's over there laughing at him. He said, where's your God at? Did he go to sleep? Yeah. What happens? He, he gone on vacation or something? Where's your God at? Amen. Elijah was just making fun of him because Elijah already knew what his God was going to do. Amen. God, uh, Elijah challenged him to the test. God, Elijah was ready to put God to the test. Amen. Elijah, boy, they said, they said, our God's just not going to make it, amen. They're, they're, he, he just ain't coming. Amen. Elijah said, well, call him some more. He might be sick. He might be. Boy, yeah. he, he was just letting them have it, amen. He, he was just letting them have it. Yeah. They, they, they was over there cutting themselves, trying to get their God to come, amen. That, come on. That, that's hollering for old Baal. Come on down here, Baal. But you know what? There's no such thing as Baal, amen. There, there's no such thing as a God like that. Our God is the highest God, amen. Our God is the only God, the only one. 
Oh, glory to God. He's the high God. Amen. He's the only one. And you know what? Whenever, whenever Elijah called on his God, yeah. fire came right out of heaven. Amen. Yeah. It consumed the water. It consumed the whole thing. It yeah. consumed it all. Amen. Yes, Took care of it. But you know what? His, his, old, old, Elijah's, old Elijah's pottery was up there looking good. I mean, he was up there on top, amen. He, he was look. God done molded him up, amen, made a big, beautiful vase. But you know what? Even Elijah's vase started to fall, amen. It, right, right after that, if you'll keep going on in there, Elijah's vase started to fold up because old, old Jezebel, she sent word to him, amen. She sent word to him. She said, all oh, this has happened, buddy. I'm fixing to get you. I'm going to kill you, buddy. She was ready to get him. She wanted to get him, amen, because he'd done, done all that. And you know what Elijah done? He went off out in the wilderness and asked for God to kill him. Asked for God to take his life. I believe his vase fell down. I believe his vase fell in. It caved in, amen, just like we do today. You know what all them, all them men in the Bible back in them days, they're just like we are today. It's just a different situation, amen. It's just a different, different uh, 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 place to live, amen. Di different, but they're all, we're all the same, amen. We're all human beings, and we all got to we all got to give our lives up for Jesus, give our lives up for God, amen. Even Elijah, as strong as he was, the 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 thing that God had just done for him, amen. When he called on him. Even Elijah's vase crumbled, amen? Even Elijah's vase fell. But you know what? God picked him right back up. God picked him right back up, just like he'll do me and you today. Yes, amen? When we get out there and, 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 and some kind of problem, or a death comes up in the family, you know, it's hard. It's hard, but you know what? When you got Jesus by your side, when you got Jesus right there by your side holding your hand, you know what Jesus will do? You probably gonna think I'm crazy, but Jesus will put his arm around you. Yeah. Amen. In your time of need, in your time, Jesus will put his arm right around you. And you know what? You'll feel the comfort of God. Yes. Oh, I felt it myself. I know exactly what I'm talking about. I've been brokenhearted down crying and, and, and just brokenhearted, and I felt the arm of Jesus. Yes. Oh, glory to God. There's nothing like it in this world. There's nothing that can compare with that. Amen. There's a love of Jesus that no man will ever have. Amen. No man has, has ever felt the love of Jesus. No man can, can, can even copy the love of Jesus. Amen. We can try. We can try to be like Jesus, but no man can even copy the love of Jesus. It's, it's a love. It's a love that won't ever. You know what? You won't never want to let go of it. When you really get saved, when you really get Jesus down in your heart, yes. you, you'll never want to let go of that love. Amen. That, that when you get saved, he puts a love right down in your heart. And you'll love people. Amen. You might want to, some people you probably want to love from a couple states over. You know what I'm saying? But you still love that person. Amen. You, you still don't want, because they're a soul, they're, they're, they're a soul that can either go to heaven or hell, and you'll, you'll still love that soul. Amen. You'll still want that soul to go to heaven. Amen. I love the Lord today. Amen. Now worship as they sing.
Blessed be the name of the Lord God most high. Boy, he's the maker of heaven and earth. Yeah, he He's God, there ain't none like him. I'm telling you what, I am so thankful today that I have a God that loves me, cares about me. I want you to know, let me tell you, I told you this before, but it bears repeating. Out of everything going on in the universe and in the galaxy that God's got going on in heaven and in all other places that we don't know anything about, do you know what he's got going on most of all? He's thinking about us more than anything else. Yes. Bible says we're at the forefront of his thoughts. He's thinking about us constantly. There's never a time when he's not thinking about us. That's how big our God is. That's how much love our God has for us. I want to talk to you a little bit today about the love of God. Yes, come on, come on. You see, I've studied and read up and I've heard songs and I've heard people preach on the love of God. And, and you know, we really just won't understand the love of God and get any type of real comprehension until we get to heaven. And I'm going to tell you, the love of God is so vast and so deep and so unlimited, it's going to take us a long time once we get to heaven to still begin to understand and comprehend the love of God. Amen. That's how deep the love of God is. That's how much it stretches yeah. out. That's how far it goes. Do you understand this entire galaxy that we're in and this entire universe we're in was created out of love? God did not need to create the universe and the galaxy, the sun, the moon, stars for himself. That's right. He did it for me. Yeah. He did it for you. That's because he loved us. That's what kind of love God has for us. Amen. He created this earth. I don't know how long it took. It took six days, 6,000 years. I don't know. The Bible doesn't tell me other than the, what the account of Genesis is. And you know what? Whatever's in the account of Genesis, that's all I need to know. Amen. Amen. It's fine if scientists find out this and, and they dig around and find out that. That's fine. But I don't need to know all that. All I need to know is what God's told me about it. If he won't tell me anymore, he'd put it in the book. If he wants me to know anything, he'll tell me. He knows where I am. All he's got to do is say, Larry, I want you to know something. Yes, sir, what is it? Yeah. Other than that, I don't need to be out here studying all this other stuff. Now, I'm not putting it down. Don't get me wrong. I'm not putting science down. I'm not putting archaeology down. I'm not putting that stuff down. I think that's all fine, wonderful, and great. But I don't, it's, if that's what you want to do, you go at it. But you see, I, I found somebody that loves me. Yes. You understand, this man yes. loves me. It don't matter what I do, what I think, how I live. He loves me just like he loved Jesus. He loves me just like he loves the worst person that ever was on this earth. He loves me just like he loved Billy Graham. He loves me just like anybody else, no matter what I've done, how I live, how I don't live, what I say and don't say, where I go or what I do. He does, it don't matter to God. He loves me, and you can't change his love. Right, amen. There's nothing you can do to stop the love of God. Yeah, come on. He loves a sinner. He loves the worst sinner just as much as he loves the best saint. He loves them both equally. There's no difference in between the love that God has for them. Ah, oh, he don't love you no better. Brother Ronnie over here said, I thought he loved me better. No, he loves me better, really. He loves us, folks. Listen, you got to understand, Brother Ricky's up here talking about people, well, I've got to straighten out my life before I go to church. Uh -huh. Go to church so you can get your life straightened out. Uh -huh. That's, right. That's right. That's one reason I go to church. There's a multitude of reasons. But I go to church so I can stay in line. Yeah. Yeah. I go to church so somebody can preach to me and tell me about the Word of God because I've got to hear it. Yeah. I've got to have the Word of God every day. I've got to know that my God loves me. And see, sometimes I might slip to one side. I might tend to veer off and not realize I'm veering off. But when I go to church, yeah. you find it out. I've got somebody up there telling me. And you know what? It's, he's not looking at me. He may not know he's preaching to me, but he's preaching to me. Them praise and worship songs, who is up there singing, they may not know that they're singing to me, but they're singing to me. Yeah. That song is speaking melody to me, melody to me, and saying, Larry, come on, son, you're, you're off just a, you're off kilter a little bit. Back up. Why would you back up? Because God loves you. Yes. He'll love you into hell, he'll love you into heaven. Amen. It ain't up to him. His mind's made up. God, the love of God is just so innocent. Listen to this. Let's see here. 1 John 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, 
For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knows God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested. You know what you take out of the word manifested? Just materialized. It just showed up. How many ever watched that old show from the 60s, Star Trek? That transporter? They just beam bore, they just show up. That's what manifested means right here in this particular incident. The love of God just showed up. Yeah, amen. It pushed, the love of God will show up inside of you. If you call upon the name of the Lord and get saved, that love of God will manifest, it will materialize, it will show up inside of you and begin to push out sin. It will begin to push out all that bad stuff. And as it pushes it out, you get in this word and begin to let that word get inside of you and take up that void that's called the love of God. Let the love of God come into you. There's no shame in that. Told you before, don't swallow your pride. Spit that pride out. Get rid of it. Get rid of your pride. Fall upon your face. Humble yourself in the sight of God. You know what he said he'd do? In due season, he'll lift you up. Yeah, he will. When it's time, when he's got everything right and in perfect work in order for you, he'll say, come on, son, get up. It's your turn. It's your time to shine. Everybody, bar none, God's no respecter of person. He's a respecter of principle, baby. He's a respecter of principle of this word. God will not deviate from this word like we run off and deviate and make excuses. God does not make excuses. God set the Bible in, in perfect working order. I don't know what books was, was written before what. Somebody told me Job was written first. Well, that's fine. It's where it's supposed to be. Genesis is where it's supposed to be. Leviticus is where it's supposed to be. Micah, Jonah, all them. Ecclesiastes, all them. All the New Testament. It's in perfect working order. It's exactly where it's supposed to be because God loves us and he set things in perfect working order just for us. Yeah, it is. Come on. He set the universe, sun, moon, and stars. The tide comes in and out for us. The moon causes the, the earth to do all kinds of things. You plant by it. You live by it. We, the tide and all that stuff, and people fish by that, and they do all manner of things and living. Yep. Because he loved us. That's, That's the only reason it's that way. You think God needs the moon? No. I mean, do you really think he needs the moon, the sun, the stars? Does he really need Uranus and Pluto and all? He, he ain't got no use for them other than for them to line up with the, the earth and make the earth do what it's supposed to do because he loves us. Yep. Amen. Amen. That's, right. That's the truth. That's to tell you how much God loves us. Where Jesus was born over in Israel, Bethlehem, and the, the capital being Jerusalem, let me go ahead. If there's any scientists watching, let me just, you don't have to go any further. I want to tell you something. Jerusalem, center of the universe. It's the pinpoint, dead on center of the entire universe. Don't matter how much more it grows, it can grow forever, a millennium. It can grow forever and never stop. Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, God said would never fall. It'd be a new Jerusalem. The Bible says the new Jerusalem is our mother. That's the center of the universe. God designed that because he loves us. Amen. Yes. He set things perfect, work in order for us, not for him. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Here is love. Herein is love. Wait a minute. Let me back up. Verse 9. And this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. You don't, you might, you know, if you're not born again, you may get out there and think you're having the time of your life. And you may be, the Bible says sin's uh, fun for a season. But you don't know what living is. And I'm going to tell you, you don't know what living is and you don't know what live, love is until you get Jesus on the inside of you. You think it's a bunch of kooky folks going and doing a religious cult type of thing. And there's a bunch of those out there. But I'm going to tell you what, when you find Jesus, when he calls upon you or you cry out to him and you get born again and you begin to live for him, there's a whole new universe, not yes. just a world. There's a whole new universe that's opened up to you. And I guarantee you, you'll go, I never knew life could be this good. Amen. That's right. I never knew I could live like this. I never knew I didn't have to wake up and, and have this thing. I never knew I didn't have to sin. I never knew I didn't have to smoke and drink and cuss. I never knew that I had to be around people and tell dirty jokes just to get a laugh. Yep. Oh, I didn't know I could, there's another way to live. Yep. Amen. Jesus, the only reason Jesus was born of a virgin and every step he took on this earth had a purpose. When he went to that cross, it was because of love. Yep. Yeah. 
You don't believe it? Read over there when he's on the cross. They was mocking him, making fun of him, spit on him, ripped his beard out, put that crap plate of thorns on his head. You know what he said when he got up there? He said, Father, forgive them. Because they know not what they do. Somebody cuts us off on the highway and we got a few choice words for them. Brother, all I can tell you is the next time you wave at me, use all your fingers. That's just the way we are. That's the way human nature is. That's just the way we are. We won't forgive them. It might be the rest of the day before we forgive them. If we have to work on forgiveness, we shouldn't have to work on forgiveness. Jesus didn't have to work on forgiving us. He went to the cross because he said, Dad, I'll go down there and I'll shed my blood because my blood's the only perfect blood that can cleanse the whole world of sin, that can cause the broken bridge to be rebuilt back from man to God. Yes. You see, there was a rupture in there. When Adam gave up his authority and he gave it to the devil, before that there was a bridge from this earth to that heaven. And when Adam gave it up, that, big, that bridge got broken and exploded. And it didn't get repaired until Jesus went on the cross. And you know what he said? It is finished. Yes. I love you. Same thing. Yep. Exact same thing. You don't think God loves you? You're alive and kicking, aren't you? Yep. You're breathing. You're living. You're eating. You got on clothes. You got a job. You got on shoes. You got a place to lay your head and a place to take a shower and wash your clothes. You got grass to cut. You got family around you. Yeah, God don't love you, does he? He's given you everything that he has. The Bible says I would withhold no good thing to them love me and care about me and follow me. That's a lot. You think about the Bible said, he said I withhold no good thing. But he'll hold back all the bad. The word says it. We're going to live by the word or we're not. We're going to believe God loves us or not. <clears throat> I'm either going to believe my wife loves me for me and cares for me and cares about me or I'm not going to believe it. That's right. Her saying I love you don't work. Baby, let me tell you something. When she gets in there and cleans that kitchen and she's washing them dishes and she's doing the laundry and my sons are doing things, taking out trash and I'm out working we're all inter doing things together to keep the family and doing what we're supposed to do, yep. that says I love you more than the three words says I love yes, you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. When you, say, when you say you love me and I say I love you, I got to show you. Yep. Yeah. Jesus showed us how much he loved us when he went to that cross. Didn't have to go. He said, you know what, Dad, I, I think I'll just stay home today. No. Too much love in him, he couldn't stay home. Too much love in the Father. Too much love in the Son. Too much love in that Holy Spirit. God did. He had to do it. You me tell you something. When God began to create, he was compelled in his spirit to create because he loved us. He said there's been a, then a terrible thing happened in heaven. There's been sin up here and I've got to get some blood up. You know, he took his blood back to heaven. He said he had to go up there and clean up the heavenly utensils. That's the love of God. He said, I'm going to put this thing back in order. I'm going to set things just like they used to be. And when they get back to the used to be, I'm going to make them better. I'm going to make them better because I love you. And that's all I know is to love you. That's all God knows. He doesn't know about doing any bad to you. That's not his idea of love. His idea of love is to take you up to heaven Lead you, guide you, protect you, heal you, deliver you, set you free, give you peace, joy, rest, comfort, healing, and everything that he has in abundance, it's all been poured out. Yes. When Jesus hit that cross, baby, and then he went to the, to the tomb, and then he shot on up in heaven a little while after that, yeah. and then Pentecost came, yeah. and then they began to write the New Testament, yeah, Don't tell me that ain't love. He didn't just stand up and say, I love you. Every act that Jesus did was an act of love. Yes. It was an act of selfishness. Of selflessness. He did it not for him. He did it for us. Everything Jesus did, everything he said, everything God did, wrote the book for us. It's all because he loves us and all he wants to do. The Bible says in 3 John, it is, let me, let me give you my, what it says. He said, Beloved, it's my will above all things that you prosper and be in health. That's what he said. Even as your soul prospers. Go. Look here. 
Do you want your soul to prosper? This is the only way that your soul will prosper. Right. It's to open this book, yeah. read this book, find out about the love of God, and then you'll begin to prosper. Amen. You cannot, pro prosperity is not money. Although every time the word prosperity shows up, the word money, is, it's almost like it's synonymous with it. Yeah, we need money. I told you, money's just a tool. The love of God will give you what you need, when you need, and as often as you need it, every time, without fail. You can't tell me he won't. Right. Amen. Come on. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. Beloved, now listen to this here. Listen, if you don't get anything else, what I'm saying, get this one verse. We're in 1 John chapter 4. I'm about to read you verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Yep. Amen. I love what Brother Ricky said. You may want to love them a couple counties over. You may want to love them if they was in Chicago, but I'd love you more if you'd move north. 1,215 miles. Shoot me a text or an email. Love you. Love you. Mean it. Yeah, just as long as I don't have to look at you. As long as I don't have to smell you. As long as I don't have to be around you. Because I don't like the way you act. I don't like the way you talk. I don't like how you eat. I don't like how you live. Y'all not do this. Yep. God didn't say for me to come down here and judge people. He sent me here to love people. Yes. Amen. Amen. He loved me unconditionally. What if God started picking on me? Larry right. don't like them boots. Right. Who was that? You ought to get you another truck. You ought to paint your house. You ought to do this. You ought to do that. God never once said that. Not one time has God ever said that. Uh, he don't care. No, he doesn't care. He doesn't care if you wear blue socks. He don't. Come on. You can wear an orange shoe and a black shoe. It doesn't make no difference to God. Right. What yeah. makes a difference to God is how you out telling people about Jesus. Yeah. What makes a difference to God when you go to church and you raise your hands in the air and you praise and worship God, do you mean it? Yeah. Are you giving him lip service? Are you giving him heart service? Yeah. Which one are you doing? Nobody else around the church knows except you and you know who. How much do we love? Do we really love God? Don't just say, I love the Lord. The Lord don't want to hear you say you love him. The Lord wants you to show him that you love him. Amen. Told you before, when you go to the grocery store, buy a couple, two or three extra cans of food and take it to the pantry. Call your pastor up Monday afternoon. Pastor, is there anything we need for the church? Mm -hmm. Come on now. Can I help do anything down there? Yeah. No, you may not be able to give $10, but you can go down there and give 10 minutes. You can go down there and surely you can go down on a Saturday afternoon, a couple, two, three hours, help yeah. them wash windows, cut grass. Come on, get to Get to blower and the weed eater out, straighten the place up a little bit. You just bought two or three packs of toilet paper, take a couple weeks. There you go. Come on. You, when you bought Windex, get another one. Carry it to church. Amen. Call the pastor. Whoa. Pastor, Amen. is there anything I can do for you? I'm talking about at your house, pastor. Call the pastor. Uh, pastor, I know where you live. Is there anything you need? Can I do anything for you? Yep. That's how God did it. Show God you love him. Yes. Don't yes. tell God you love him. Amen. Right. Show you fellow man that you love him. Yes. Don't tell you fellow man that you love him. No man has seen God any time. If we love one another, if, 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 there's that big word. If we love one another, God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us. Why? Because he hath given us of his spirit and we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world. Can you testify to that? Can you testify? Can you honestly go up to somebody and say, let me tell you something. Not mad at you. Not judging you. Just want you to know that God loves you. All you got to do, buddy, is just call upon the name of the Lord. If you don't believe he's real, ask him if he's real. Lord, manifest yourself to me. I don't believe you're real. You hold on. Watch and see what happens. You'll have a testimony out of this world. 
Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. Amen. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Here is, herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness. Just got through talking about that. That we, have made, we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Now let me tell you something about a little English lesson right here. As he is, is is a now word. The word I is, is is right now. It'll always be right now. You can't say, are you going to store tomorrow? You, you don't say I is. It is is a now word. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Yes. How is Jesus up there? Is Jesus perfect and whole? Come on. Doing the will of the Father? We're perfect and whole, ought to be doing the will of the Father. Yes. If you want to be perfect and made whole, begin to do the will of the Lord. Yep. Begin to show God you love him and begin to show your fellow man that you love him. That's what you ought to have wrote and want to be written into the book of life. When they open up and they go, well, let's see, what's old John done today? Hey, he done pretty good. Been out telling people about the Lord, hadn't been judging anybody. He's been out doing his best to get souls saved, lives changed, and families restored. He's been praying for people, laying hands on people. Amen. And now he's went home to his family, and he's going to get himself in order because he's got to go to work tomorrow. Yes, sir. And he rules and judges his household in the correct order. And I ain't even got to my other scriptures. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Now listen at this. Love this verse right here. There's no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. Fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Let me just go ahead and tell you. We're in his flesh. Yes. We're going to have fear. Amen. The strongest Christian in the world is going to have some fear at some uh, times. Amen. What did David say? David talked about that. He said, while I'm yet afraid. Yep. Go over and read it. It's in the book of Psalms. I ain't going to tell you where it is. You get over and dig it out. There you go. You rightly divide the word. If I tell you, it won't do you any good. See, I found that out. For somebody to tell me where scripture is, that's fine. I'll go look it up. But it's so much better for me if I get in there and dig it out myself. Yep. Yes, right. Amen. It's so much more satisfaction to get in and dig it out. Listen, there's no fear in love. Well, let me tell you something, folks. Just, just, can I just confess to you? Sometimes I have fear. I do. I do. Sometimes I just get afraid, sister. I just I do. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and fear's waiting on me. But you see, I've learned something. The Holy Ghost has shown me something, and the Bible has shown me something, and that blood of Jesus has shown me something. When fear shows up, I don't have to let it stay. You know what I do? Lord, those are not my thoughts. I rebuke them thoughts. I cast down that imagination. Every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, I judge that thought ungodly and I cast it down and condemn it. Yes. Anytime a thought other than God comes to you, you do that. Yes. You don't have to, you don't, just because a thought comes, you don't have to entertain it. Right. When the thought comes to you and it's not of God, Lord, those are not my thoughts. Amen. Come on. I cast them thoughts down. I'll not think that way. Amen. I'll not live that way. I'll follow the love yeah. of God. I'll follow the word of God. I'll follow the blood of Jesus. I'll be at the cross. I'll be there when the roll is called up yonder. They're going to call my name. Are they going to call yours? Yeah. 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 Do you love God? If you love God, show God that you love him. If a man say, oh, here we go. i got time for this one. I'm going to take time. Y'all assist. If a man say, I love God and hates his brother, huh? If a man says, he, he says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he that loved not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? How are you going to tell me you love God and then begin to gossip about your neighbor about the big old party they had last night? Come on. Guys, I love you. Follow the name of the Lord. Whosoever is called upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call upon him. Amen. I love you. I'll see you in a week. When the way gets rough and